Do you know what happens when you ask a college student about illegal immigration? Well, their mind just explodes. They create a vortex in time and space. Let's see what happens. No, no, what, what is it? Would you agree with the definition that a criminal is someone who breaks the law? Mm. Here's why I'm thinking. <laughs> I knew you Are were... you okay with deporting every illegal person that's here? No. Why? There is a lot of illegal immigrants here that are working their butts off for the life that no, they No, no, I, I don't care if they're working hard. But the point <laughs> is, what should the punishment be for breaking into a country? Depends on the crime you commit after no, no. you break into it. Okay. No, ju no, th that's it. The, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm talking about just the crime is breaking in. What should the punishment be? I break into somebody's home, what should their punishment be? The punishment for the crime of breaking into a nation should be what it is in Switzerland and Israel and Hungary. Every person who breaks into a nation uninvited goes back to their country of origin, period. So why End is there story. an emphasis on the southern border? Because most people come illegally through the southern border. 10 million people have come across the southern border. And by the way, if, if you come into a country uninvited, definitionally you are a criminal. We're just not going to agree. It's fine. Then That's final okay. question. What is a criminal? So what, what is a woman? What is a criminal? No, no. What, what is it? Would you agree with the definition that a criminal is someone who breaks the law? Mm. Here's why I'm thinking. <laughs> I don't. Here's the thing. I don't. I know how he's going to turn it. And I don't fully It's not a matter of turning it. It's a, it's a very A, B, C sequence. If they're not criminals, then tell me what a criminal is. And a criminal is obviously someone who breaks the law. Someone who comes across the southern border broke federal law. Therefore, they are a criminal. Okay, then we can just disagree. But you have to tell me what a criminal is, though. You and I know illegal immigration is becoming a massive problem for Western society. We're living in countries now where millions upon millions of illegal immigrants who hate our culture or, like Douglas Murray said it best, at least don't like us. But no, I did not want to be a, a, in a society in Britain where we have jihadists living in our midst, where we have terrorists that we welcome in, where we give every advantage to people who hate us or at the very least do not like us. I never wanted that to be the case. I'm extremely sad that it is the case. I'd love to see it turned around. I, I, I know how it could happen. I have very low belief that we have anyone in charge in Britain who knows what to do about this. But it's a problem they've brought on our society and I profoundly wish that they had not. Now, we know what happens when illegal immigration runs out of control in a country. We have examples of that in the past. Now, I will direct you to Victor Davis Hansen, who has written books about this. If you don't want to read the books, you can watch podcasts where he explains in depth how illegal immigration is a danger for a society. Now, I'm going to put some short clips into, in today's video and we're going to discuss them. Have we seen any historical precedent for what we want to call almost a borderless country and not, and not other than a foreign invasion in a military sense. Has there ever been a society that had such a, uh, a policy of not enforcing a border? And, and of course, to me, it seems like that's sort of the definition of a country. It is. And as long as the Danube and the Rhine were considered the borders against northern intrusions, Rome, from the Republic of 753 BC all the way to 470s, was was safe. But once that border was porous, and either the Romans could not or would not defend it, and there's a variety of reasons I won't get into whether they wanted to or they couldn't do it, but they didn't defend it, and then tribes poured across in the many millions, most of them antithetical to Roman society in that sense they didn't speak Latin, they had no experience with um, te the technology that Rome possessed, they had no experience with habeas corpus uh, or uh, the, the Roman legal code, etc., etc. But they did have a sense that 
there was a lot of bounty affluence and that there would be very few demands placed on them and no resistance to them. In my opinion, Victor Davis Hansen is a very, very intelligent man and he's worth listening to in regards to immigration. He's a historian who probably knows much more than you and I, or than let's say 99% of people out there about what illegal immigration does to the cohesion of a society. And they would sort of take all the good things they wanted without having to, to endure anything that they didn't feel was compatible. And that was the end of Rome. We see it in Europe. It's, Europe is on the precipice. Countries like Sweden, um, where 20% of the population is immigrant, and they're from Middle East countries for the most part, are completely antithetical to the Swedish liberal socialist democracy. And yet, only now do the Swedes wake up and say, if these people are not going to be assimilated and they're going to bring Sharia law and male chauvinism and religious intolerance and anti-Semitism, and they have a, a different view of violence than we do, then we don't want them to come because we haven't been able to assimilate them and integrate them in a fashion that would require, that, that's required. And so... We've just heard there that assimilation doesn't happen if illegal immigration runs completely out of control and it creates ghettos. And we all can see that. We all, I mean, I'm an immigrant. I'm a Spanish immigrant to the UK, but I'm not going to lie. I saw how my father had trouble let's say, integrating into English society as I just grew up here, so I didn't have that trouble. So that's what the powers that be, let's say if we would say that they're trying to look for a positive outcome out of all this illegal immigration that's just running out of control, they're looking for the next generation of the illegal, the illegal immigrants that are coming right now for them to be integrated into the societies that they're emigrating to. But we are actually seeing, and look, since I don't care and I've made videos saying what I think, I'm just going to say what I think. I don't think all immigration is created equally. And I'm going to leave that here so you can tell me what you think. We, we took over 2 million Ukrainians who are working, who are peaceful in Poland. We will not receive even one Muslim because this is what we promised. But I asked this not about illegal failed. immigrants. I asked about refugees. And Jean-Claude Juncker, the Commission President, says that you're racist. You sound proud of the fact that you haven't taken any refugees. Of course, because this is what our people are expecting from our government. That's number one. This is why our government was elected. But this is why Poland is so safe. This is the, the, the reason why we had not even uh, one terrorist attack. Look at the streets in Poland. And we can be called populists, nationalists, racists. I don't care. I care about my family and about my country. I agree with him a thousand percent. Not all immigration is created equally. If we start allowing people from cultures that are just antithetical to our culture, that is the complete opposite of the values that we stand for, of the principles that we stand for, then what is what do the powers that be think that the inevitable outcome will be? Because you've seen it, I see it through the streets of London every single day. Communities, we could even call them ghettos, no-go zones. We all know about this, and we all know who creates these zones, who creates these ghettos. It's illegal immigrants who don't integrate or assimilate to the culture that they're emigrating to. And I don't, I just cannot understand how there's people still willing to say that we want that kind of immigration, that we should just be nice. We should be good people. They want to feel good with themselves. They want to feel like they are good persons. And the only way to do that is for them to then, you know, bring in as many um, non-whites as possible and to give them stuff, basically. So this is the main mechanism. And I want to say to everyone, to all Poles and to all, all Europeans worldwide, that it doesn't make you a good person by giving away wealth to others 
what makes you a good person is to look out for your family and for your people because your people that is the um, your extended family so that makes you a good person a good person is not someone who wants to invite all of the third world into Europe so they can live on welfare because you can see the the results of it you have the multicultural health project so you can see now in Sweden in Germany in Holland England young girls they cannot go out at night because they will be harassed or even worse I don't want to talk about it now but you all know what's going on in uh, Western Europe so do avoid it and do whenever you talk politics and I'm speaking to all of Eastern Europe now by the way whenever you talk politics if someone says I want to be a good person we should accept all of these migrants so they can have a better life then you say no absolutely not the best thing we can do is to look out for our own people that is the main priority that makes you a good person so if you want to be a good person as a polish man then it's about looking out for the polish people first and i think that a lot of it comes from that a lot of it comes i think from the guilt that we as the first world have in thinking that you know we've got it good we've done the right things our country works so we should let all of those people come in so we can help them but we forget that they come from a state they come from a country where it didn't work where the state failed where their policies where their culture where their values where their principles they failed if like douglas murray says if we allow them to flood our country and don't forget that these are people who don't want to follow our culture who don't want to who, who don't do anything remotely patriotic for the country that they're immigrating to i'm going to put some videos of spain what's happening right now in spain with immigration and you have to think that a lot of these immigrants that come through, through spain i'm going to be completely honest don't stay in spain a lot of them go to france and a lot of them go through france to the uk to germany etc etc they don't stay in spain and we in Europe are shooting ourselves in the foot thinking that this is going to be positive for our society bringing in people who hate our culture who hate our society who hate our values who hate our principles and I've had discussions with people that I try to explain these things to them and they just they respond so emotionally and they respond like this. And usually these conversations go like this. Well, we should just be nice. We should just let everyone in because their country doesn't work because they have bad politicians. It's not their fault that their country has bad politicians. They're just looking for a better life. And my answer to them is always the same. Okay, I agree with you and I feel bad that their country doesn't work, that they have it bad in their country, but what should we do? Should, should we just let everyone in? from a country that's a failed state, a failed country. Most of the world, it's a failed state and a failed, <laughs> and uh, they're failed countries. Almost the whole world are failed states and failed countries, which by the way, most of them are left leaning countries, but I'm not gonna get into that. But should we just let everyone from everywhere into the Western world because their country did not work? We don't have the resources or the space to accommodate them. And look at this video. 170 patients in this apartment, that's 170, quite a few. There are 90 patients waiting to be seen at the moment, that's 90, 90 of you are still waiting to be seen. Our current wait time for a doctor is seven and a half hours. I will estimate that by the time I go home in the morning at eight o'clock, some of you will still be here waiting for a doctor, because the wait will get up to 12 or 13 hours. I will expect that. Um, there are currently no beds in the trust, we're trying to make some space as we can, but if people are admitted, there is a chance they might stay in A&E for the night. So we will make you comfortable, we will do our best, we will look after you, but please don't expect that you'll be going straight to a ward, because that may not happen. Um, if anyone is feeling particularly unwell whilst they're here, please let the girls reception know, and then escalate to us, we'll make sure that officers <coughs> whatever we can do. Um, anyone here is a relative, can I ask you to leave? Because obviously we're running out of space, now what do you think happens when you have limited resources even for 
the people that are already in the country. But you keep letting in thousands upon thousands of immigrants. The only inevitable consequence is that the country's infrastructures will crumble. It's just logic. It's just logic. And I don't think you, I, or anyone can dispute that. I'm not saying that there shouldn't be no immigration in a country. And funnily enough, all these people, like, I'm just going to put a few examples, Douglas Murray, Victor Davis Hansen, Charlie Kirk, they all say, we're not saying we don't want any immigration. We're not just saying that no immigration is what we want. We're saying that we want controlled immigration, that we want, I'm, I'm talking about what they say, we want people that will add value to our society. And I guess I fall in the same camp because I am the beneficiary of immigration, but I just, I cannot be blind to the results that uncontrolled illegal immigration can have in a society. So I just, even though I'm the beneficiary of immigration, I will never in a million years deny the obvious. Sorry, I just can't do it. In my m m moral compass, as warped as it is, and I know it's warped, just cannot say what I don't think is true. The people who are talking about these things, far right, right wing Nazis, and they're the devil, and it, it just seems so unreasonable to call them that. Where now, if anything that you say sits slightly on the right of the far left, you're a Nazi. And I think that is very, very extremely dangerous because there's real Nazis out there. There's real, real bad people out there, real far right, r extreme right Nazis out there. And this could be an excuse that they might have. I've watched a really good video and I recommend it to you a lot. And it's um, by what what if alt hist and i will leave the videos some of his videos in the description below there is some very very good videos where he talks about the anthropology of the left and the anthropology of the right and many other great informational videos that i would i would really recommend you watch them because he explains that it's just inevitable that if the left keeps pu pushing specifically young men to the right the response that they're gonna have is probably an extreme right response. And he, he says, it, he explains it in the video very well. And he says, when you keep continually all this feminism, left-wing movement, etc., when you keep telling men that being far right, being a Nazi, and you keep calling everyone Nazi for whatever reason, you're gonna make them think that that's the cool thing to be. And I can't explain it as good as he can, so I recommend you watch his videos. He explains it in one of his videos, What If Alt Hist, and he says that in the Weimar Republic, right before the Nazis came into power, they were living a very similar time than what we are living right now, which was hedonic pleasure. The left was ruling while the majority didn't want them to rule. And that just basically turned everyone in, in Germany into a fascist. I'm not saying that I want that to happen now, and let me just say, I categorically don't want that to happen right now. I wouldn't want to live in a tyranny. I don't care what ideology the tyranny comes from. I don't care if it's a right-wing ideology or a left-wing ideology. Tyranny, I don't want to live in a tyranny, period. And I think that if we don't talk about the things that I might be wrong telling you these things, I might not be right in telling you what I think. And what I think might actually be wrong because I don't have all the facts at my disposal, like maybe some of these people have. But what I think we should do is to be open to the discourse about these things, to not shut down people that want to talk about these things openly. Because what we have after the Second World War is we have taboo on, on anything that is remotely nationalistic or patriotic because of what the Nazis did. And I think that that taboo should be gone and that we should say openly, you can be nationalistic without being a Nazi. You can be patriotic without being a Nazi. Those two things do not go together.